I got plenty of time to whip your ass. <laughs> awesome. All right, so so today's another way. Today's another day to attack the recovery process of my body. Um, this ain't no massage envy, although there's pillows here. Oh, but there's uh, things very far from it being comfortable. <laughs> this is uh, this is not your sweetest massage. This is not even deep tissue. This is intense pressure. So uh, uh, I'd like to introduce you to, to Brett. Brett and his team. How are you? <laughs> Ready to rock this and roll? This guy, we're going to crush him today. <laughs> Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about your background. Uh, uh, what would you do before massage? Played music uh, most of my life. A uh, couple big bands in the 80s and 90s. Traveled the world two, three times and uh, got massaged a lot because of the intense head banging and everything. Keep myself together. So that's kind of how I fell in love with the whole massage thing. So what are we, so what are we working on today? We're working on just, just get me loose. Yeah, we're going to loosen you up. I know that, uh, you know, your trainer is always talking about your hips. Uh, we do know about your shoulders, but we're going to, we're going to work all through the hip flexors, uh, hamstrings, quads, lower back. Lower back, yeah. We're gonna do, and uh, uh, hopefully, uh, you guys are into screaming because you're gonna hear something. <laughs> it's gonna be good. And after I'm done with him, I got Doc in the back. Doc, uh, yeah. Uh, hey, what's going on? We're gonna do a little snap, crackle, pop. Sure. How you doing? So this is like a one-two punch here. So, uh, Doc, you know we're gonna do some adjustments. Uh, why, why is chiropractic care so important, especially sure. when an athlete stops by and yeah, he wants to be active? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, chiropractic care is a great, you know, natural way of uh, healthcare. You know, and particularly for athletes, it's a great way for performance and recovery. Um, you know, by adjusting the spine, the joints are moving better. You know, muscle activation is stronger. Recovery time tends to be faster. Um, you know, whether you're into, you know, just general organized sports or you're into, you know, focused training, whether it's MMA or, you know, weightlifting or powerlifting, a lot of people utilize chiropractic care for performance and recovery purposes. So for entrepreneurs like me who uh, go through a lot of stress, it's something that a lot of people overlook because sometimes they may not think that their body is taking on a lot of the stress and tightening up. And sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it's a great way for, for stress reduction, uh, not only physically, but also emotionally. I think it makes a big difference. The problem is a lot of people just aren't aware of it. You know, some people aren't even aware of what you can do chiropractic care or what you can utilize it for other than when somebody thinks they had an injury or they had back pain per se. But yeah, a lot of patients respond extremely well uh, of all ages. You know, I treat, you know, some of the high level athletes. I treat men and women as well as, uh, you know, families and children from time to time as well and uh, it works great cool so so Brett's gonna loosen me up because I'm so damn tight right now so it's easy for him to to move me around so this, this should be fun yeah so typically yeah. for patients who are really tight a lot of times Brett will do the myofascial work and then I'll get in and I'll adjust them afterwards tends to make the adjustment a little bit more effective cool so cool all right, ready let's to do it man I'm ready let's okay. go bro all right here we go man let me get oh you know what I forgot my mouthpiece I need to go get my mouthpiece I'm gonna be screaming Hold on. Oh, you better, <laughs> you better bring it. Alrighty, besides mayhem, what's gonna happen here with Matt? Matt comes in, he's got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, probably from just uh, prior stuff, being in the military, tearing his body up. Also mental stuff, entrepreneur, you know, kicking it all the time, crushing it. He's got a lot of stress probably, but he turns it into a good positive stuff. So it's an honor to work on him because I love his, his business and his attitude, so this is gonna be awesome. So we're kinda of gonna start with his glutes. We're gonna work his glutes, we're gonna work his hamstrings to help take some uh, tension off that low back of his. Unfortunately, I'm gonna sweat a lot because of the new uh, rules and wearing masks in here, but you know what, we're gonna do what we gotta do to stay safe, right? Touching a lot of areas here, even getting down into some of the uh, deeper muscles underneath the glutes. So. Mellis. And uh, yeah, if you can get a picture underneath that cradle, you'll see some good facial expressions, I guarantee you. Here we go. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hardest part just telling yourself to relax. All right. Back up. Kind of going opposite directions. Here we go. Uh, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. He's, he's swimming to shore. You can see his feet kicking. <laughs> Scream really loud if you think I'm the best massage therapist. Yeah, <laughs> you know? You know. Yeah! Reborn! 
that's good. Yeah. Sounds like my cat. Uh, <laughs> just trying to breathe. Right? <laughs> so it causes one side to be more adhesive than the other. Well, I mean, it all depends on what you've had. I mean, in, yeah. in the past, if you've had injuries and maybe yeah. didn't go in and uh, get them taken care of, so a lot of scar tissue is built up in the area, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, stretching is a huge thing, you know? We yeah. need to stretch. Yeah. Uh, you know, mobility becomes a little less, a uh, little less uh, activating when you're, when we start to get older. head north in the age <laughs> department, I say. Uh. So all those, all those uh, traits there, all that stuff has something to do with it. Uh, oh. You get a little sensitive in here, to the heart side. Left side, you got a little more heart, so the nerves are a little bit more activating here. So we're gonna go in here. I'm gonna try to really get in there. Let that elbow go with your mind, let it go. There you go, if you let that mind go, you're not gonna hold that back. The mind is huge. His mind blocks, like all of us, a lot of movement because his mind's saying, no, 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 no. Remember that kind of, that's, that's tight, that hurts. So when he lets his mind go, we can get the shoulder to go back. Very important. I mean, a lot of this stuff could be structural, but sometimes it's mental. Wow. It's just holding back wow. the thought process is telling the muscles not to move. Wow. How's that trying to look to business? Lots of, lot of business listener right there. Oh my! Uh, right there. Nice. Woo! It's like a sweat box in here. You gotta love it, man. So I think one of the most profound things he told me, which we, we translate that into business, is sometimes your progress as an entrepreneur, a lot of it's mental. And not maybe because you don't have the skill set, or maybe that you can't do it. It's all mental. And once you're able to break through, I have somebody here, again, work you from a different angle. Here is physical, but in business is mental. But here, the easiest way to push my limits and to remind myself of that is through the physical capacity. But if you translate what we're going through, what we're experiencing right now as an entrepathly, that a lot of the things that we put as a roadblock may not be necessarily a skill set or because you can't do it. It was you're telling yourself you can't do it. Hmm. Nuggets there, huh? From a mechanical standpoint, you look up further towards the hip and to the low back. You know, right. and what we'll take a look at is we'll do okay. some adjusting, some side posture adjusting, okay. and then we'll take a look and see where your, your, your hip extension is. We'll see if the knee flexibility changes a little bit more in addition okay. to what Brett already did. Yeah. And we'll see if there's any other functional improvement with it too. So gotcha. let's do this. Let's have okay. you hop on down, okay. you know, along with everything else that we're going to adjust sure, and sure. work on at the same time. So just sure. go ahead and go face down for face me. Down. Let's take okay. a look. Yeah, cool. Alright. So then you can go back into normal ranges of motion and take some of the stress away from the joint. Yeah. Typically what you'll find is the glute muscles will be weak and the quads will be too tight. Typically when you have knee issues like that. So another quick test we're going to do and then we'll hop into the adjusting and I'll okay. go back to how that all kind of ties in together. Okay. Um, Keep the whole leg nice and straight and yeah. lift it up off of the off the table for me. The whole leg, like I'll the look. whole thing and like raise it up towards the ceiling the best you can. Go ahead, do the right side first. Okay. Yeah and then back down. So the first thing that comes to mind is one, he should be able to go higher, two, he's rotating offwards, right? Yeah. So the hip isn't moving correctly or the, or the muscle isn't strong enough to elevate that properly. So now let's go ahead and let's take a look, we'll check the other side out. Yeah, and back down. What do you notice when you lift those? Is it difficult to lift them up? Do you get tension or tightness in the back? What do you, what do you experience? You know, it is, I am facing it in the back, facing tightness in the back. Go ahead, same, at both sides you feel that? Yeah, um, this one here, it's easier, obviously, to lift up. This one is even harder, right? Yeah. You can see him rotating off through there. So, and guess what? That's the same side that you have more problems with the knee. Uh, That's right, exactly. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to do some adjusting for the hips and pelvis on each side, and then we're going to go back and we're going to retest the hip extension and your knee flexibility. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pull you a little bit closer. All right. Good. There we go. And we'll kind of get you on the side. We'll let you go ahead and we'll pull you through. This is going to come up a little bit more if you can, and then try to let it relax the best you can. Nice and easy, good. There we go. Good. And then go ahead and go on your back for me. A little bit of movement, not too bad. So stay on your back for me okay. on this one. We're going to get the upper back and the shoulder here. Go ahead and hold on. Yep. And we're going to run through, get you adjusted. Good. And then one more. There it was. And then we're going to go a little bit lower. Your flexibility is terrible. <laughs> you got to work it. Yeah, oh my yeah. God. Go ahead and come a little bit closer. We're going to bring this guy up too. 
best that we can. Did the knee, by the way, recently kind of flare up on you? It did. It yeah. Did. Yeah. Yeah, from the, from the dam. I think it may have almost have gotten there. Go ahead and relax. I'm, I'm going to let you kind of just hang that one down. I'll kind of work around it best that I can. Good. There oh. it was. Good. And now let's go ahead and go, ahead and Ooh, go on your back good. one more time. Yeah. Not bad, right? Yeah. Good. Good. Snap, crackle, pop. Good. Oh, nice. There you go. There we go. Good. Okay. So let's do this. Let's have you flip back over. We're going to go ahead and we're going to check with these spots. Okay. There, all right? Okay. There you go. So now just for the heck of it, let's go back and we're going to take a look at this. So I'll keep this guy nice and straight and go ahead and try to bring this guy up for me. Oh yeah, much faster, right? Yeah. Less tension on the back with yeah. that? Uh -huh. Let's go ahead and we'll hit this side too. Right, oh, and back down. Less tension through there? Yeah, oh. little, less tension. Nice. Yeah. Basically, it's it, it's really that simple. So they kind of tie in together, I guess, is the point. And that would be, a, it's a little bit of a weak point. So when you're on your on your laying face down and you're going into that extension position and you can't get up through there. Part of it's because the joints are weak or the, the joints are stuck and part of it's because the hip muscles are a little bit weak in relationship to the quadriceps. Yeah, so know. it's working on strengthening and improving mobility down here will also in turn help improve the flexibility of the knee. So, you know, so the point is we just keep working on what we're doing and you have a flare up, hit it a couple more times in a row and it should continue to be helpful for you. Awesome. So Cool. cool. Awesome, man. Appreciate Very good. Work. Appreciate you. Helping. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. There it is. All right, so here are my three biggest takeaways from seeing a chiropractor, going through cryotherapy, and dealing with a massage therapist. First one, this might be, might be sounding cliche, but no pain, no gain, right? Oftentimes as an entrepreneur, that we strive to go out and say, you know, I'm gonna make a hundred thousand here, I'm gonna make a million dollars here, I'm gonna start a business. There's some pain in that, there's some heavy lifting. And so what taking care of my body reminds me when I go through my business is that there's gonna be some areas of big discomfort, major discomfort. If there's something I wanna be comfortable in, I wanna be comfortable being uncomfortable. Obviously these professionals here and obviously through medical care, they know the limitations of the body, they know how to see the body, they know how to make sure they take care of the body to make sure that there is some discomfort that's not there to injure you. Translate that to business. When you're around your business, when you're around your advisors, when you're on your counsel, you're on your coach, your board, your fellow employees, you gotta make sure you do the things necessary to grow, to develop, uh, to, to make the expansions necessary, the processes necessary to make sure that you don't end up injuring your business, that you don't injure yourself, that you don't put yourself at financial risk, financial harm, so to make sure your business continues to grow, develop, and you get out of your business what you're looking for. Second part is mental blocks. Listen, coming out of the military, one of the things I did not do, sadly, which I did not do, was take care of my body when I started my business, and literally for close to 20 years, my body, uh, some of the areas of flexibility, mobility, scar tissue developed, because I stopped moving. I I didn't even give a shot to decondition myself. I just stopped working out completely altogether without a regimen coming out of the military. Translate that to business. Sometimes we go through our life with an old blueprint. And, and the thing about those mental blockages is that you think you're doing something right, but when, when somebody on the outside says, you know what, you have, you have a lack of mobility here. You have lack, lack of flexibility here. Translate that to business. You think you're going your phone calls, right? You think you're, nego you're going through your negotiations, right? You think you're hiring the right people the right way, but how do you know until somebody's there to coach you, teach you, and guide you that it's wrong, or you're able to self-assess that you're just not getting the results you wanted based on what you think you're doing. And so the correlation between physical fitness and financial business fitness is making sure that we mentally don't get in our own way. And the third one is really understanding your weaknesses. You know, when Doc was going through me, he said, listen, every time I work on you, your flexibility, your flexibility, your flexibility. So here's my strengths in the gym. My strengths is bench, big, uh, uh, big compound exercises. What I realize I need to work on right now with my trainer says, bro, how do I work on my flexibility? How do I work on making sure I, I, I get that range, those ranges of motion back again? How can we do exercise to make sure that if certain areas of my body are strong, but areas are weak, it's keeping me from the results I'm really looking for. So in business, the cool part, I remember Kobe Bryant saying, I need to work on my weaknesses. He need to work on his weaknesses as a, a sophomore, junior in high school, so therefore he become the number one basketball player in high school. So in our business, the benefit of working on your weaknesses is sometimes you can not only identify your weaknesses, but you can hire people 
and delegate those weaknesses to give us that's their strong point and they they feel the, the, the their a game in that area and you don't you can actually hire your weaknesses you can actually hire people that are good at that scenario and this is this is what reminds me listen let me stay stay in my power spot not because i don't want to improve that skill set but i might not get the right type of energy when applying it because i want to make sure if i'm building my business i'm always in my a game I make sure I won't come to my office. I want to be there. I don't loathe it. I'm saying, oh, you got to do this again. So the benefit of being an entrepreneur is understanding your weaknesses. So therefore, your your weaknesses, once 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 you've addressed it, whether you do it yourself or you delegate it and create a job for it, you can have a very strong uh, offensive strategy to your business and not respond to your business because you've addressed your weaknesses.